All right, my lighting is a little bit weird tonight, and I don't know how many people are gonna use this video, but we're gonna give it a shot. Um, I like to DM for people, um, and lately I've really gotten into fifth edition. It's really, really fun. There's a lot of really great content out there. And uh, I like physical objects. So I like to have markers on the board. Um, you know, a buddy of mine has 3D printed uh, everything you know he has all these figures um, I can't usually afford that so um, I usually print things out and put them in these little sort of sandwich board uh, markers but even those are kind of not detailed right so if I want to show uh, a player what someone looks like let's say that we're running into uh, Baldur's Gate and this is in the descent into Avernus um, and we run into a Nightblade in the sewers um, now, I promise you this card is white, but uh, the chroma key thinks it's green right now, so that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so it's, it's cutting out her uh, figure here, but um, you can kind of see the detail on this is because it's bigger, right? You know, it's a, it's a large card. It's at least the size of my hand. Um, it's about postcard size, about a quarter of a page. So I have the stats on the back of it. But you can't really see there you go see stats and I have the picture on the front so there you go all right so if I hold it at an angle it'll uh, it'll pull up that's a pretty cool effect though I'm gonna have to keep in mind that I can chroma key behind a prop like this I don't know what good that information is but you know here's uh, Mortlock Fontampur here's real surreal there's some really great artwork in fifth edition D&D &D. This one might have to twist a little. This is a, uh, a follower of Merkel. There you go. The best reason for this size of card has to do with my age versus my kid's age versus people who are playing. Um, my eyes aren't as good as theirs anymore. So I like the three and a half by five inch size. You can get a lot of good text on it. For simple creatures, the text can be plenty big enough to read maybe even without my glasses or with a light pair of glasses as opposed to my bifocals. These Ultra Pro sleeves hold 100 cards in this package because it comes with 25 of these sleeves. They're four, four each. So here you can see I have a D-ring binder, an easy D-ring binder uh, with some Dragon Cultists from Horde of the Dragon Queen and uh, you know a map there to the left from that same module. This is a page for some NPCs that I made up for a tavern called the Dirty Dog that's in Brampton in Baldur's Gate. It's a, a strictly lower city kind of establishment. And here are the stats for the NPCs on the back. So as you can see, I, I was able to use some artwork that I found online for this, which means that it's not legal for me to sell these cards. Like it would be very, uh, not okay for me to sell these artists to work without their permission. Um, I try to give thank yous and uh, commissions and Patreons, and I, I highly recommend Patreon for artists that you use on a regular basis. All right, let's talk about all the stuff you're going to need to make these cards. The first thing you need is a printer. Duh. I have a laser printer because I am a rich and powerful person that can afford a color laser printer, but any sort of color or photo printer ought to do the trick. As long as you can uh, fit this stuff into it, which is an 80 pound cardstock. It's a medium cardstock. It should fit most printers just fine. Uh, the, the key here is that it is 97 brightness. So the brighter the piece of paper, the better the image will transfer, assuming that you have a good image and good text. Once things are printed, we'll want to protect them from our fingerprints and smearing. So I use this uh, cheap gloss sealer that I can pick up at uh, Walmart. So you can pick this stuff up. My wife uses it for a bunch of other projects as well, so I steal hers all the time. We need some sort of dark construction paper. So something that when we fold over the piece of cardstock, we're not going to see light through it. So we don't want our players cheating. We don't want them seeing through the card onto the stat block if you should hold up the card. So the darker the color, the better. We're going to use a Gorilla Glue adhesive. I use this just because it, it works. 
Um, I'm maybe a brand bigot when it comes to Gorilla Glue. I use this stuff for everything. And last and certainly not least is a way to cut the paper once everything is done. The cutter that I use is this Fiskars, and you can't really see it from this angle, but uh, it has a roller as the cutter as opposed to a blade. Okay, so the first thing to know is how to make uh, the cards for printing. You can see here I have a PowerPoint deck. No, nothing is really magical here. So what I've got is all the cut lines outlined on this page. And so this margin here is a half inch. This gutter is a half inch, so quarter inch, quarter inch if you want. And then the uh, right margin is a half inch as well. This center uh, piece here is a half inch. And then there's a quarter inch off of each end as well. And then I have a tiny, tiny four tenths of an inch uh, margin uh, inside of that. So you can see these guidelines and the guides are such that this uh, particular image wasn't lined up for some reason, okay, uh, but the width here is 3.42 and then the height is 4.92 um, within this margin and then that keeps me from cutting into any image or uh, stat block that I might need to put here. So let's start with a blank page. I actually created a layout that has these uh, these cut marks and margins on them and today I need two more cards. I need Rhea Mantleborn. So we're in Baldur's Gate and uh, someone told me that this was artwork that showed her and so I'm, I'm gonna maybe use this image. Um, we'll go ahead and now it's tough to snag this image like if I do this this doesn't always work on the Beyond site just as an FYI. Yeah. Um, so I don't even know what that was. That was kind of wild. So sometimes you have to do some, uh, there, there'll be a link down here that says show image, uh, or I can, I can open the image in a new window, in a new tab like this. I can snag this image, and then that can come over to here. Now because this picture is uh, this orientation, I'm, I'm going to turn it, and I'm actually going to turn it for both of these. Uh, now, knowing that I have 4.92 here, I can do this. I'm going to see if I can get rid of this sort, sort of paper tear uh, here at the bottom as well. So let's crop this. And this is meant to show Baldur's Gate as sort of this seedy place. But I don't really care about that for this particular picture. So now let's see what we get here. 492, and we're a little too wide. So if I widen this a bit, And then we'll go back to 4.92, like this. Okay, now I'm pretty close. Now I'm really close. Okay, so if I crop from here, I can crop down to my guide. And now I've got 3.42 by 4.92. I'm well within my margin. And I have a picture of Rhea. Now, Rhea Mantelmorn is a veteran. So there's a couple of ways that you can get a stat block. So if we search this page for Rhea, oops, do, 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 veteran stat block. So if I go to the veteran stat block, 
it still says veteran here. Now there's a couple of things I can do. One of the things is, and, and this is what I most commonly do, stat block generator. This link here, this tetracube.com, tetra he's got some really great stuff. And this is, this is one of them. So if I come up here and I search for veteran and use preset, then it gives me the stat block. How cool is that, right? Let's do one column because this is a fairly short stat block and I think I can fit it into the other thing. Um, now there's two things I want to edit. I want to edit the name, Rhea Mantlemorn. I have a tendency at this campaign because I have too many players at the table to max out my hit points. So 98 is 72 plus 18, so 90. So Rhea's gonna have 90 hit points. That's two updates that I want. Now I have Rhea Mantelmorn, 90 hit points, and all the stuff for veteran that is applicable. I'm gonna zoom in on this, try to increase the resolution as much as I can, and then I take a screen clipping. Perfect. So we'll clip the screen as close as we can here, like this. And we'll go back to our PowerPoint and paste it in. Let's see. I think what I want here is 4.92. Oh, nope, the width is going to be figure 3.42. Now I have a nice Rhea card. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten this. So under format in PowerPoint, you can use you know GIMP or Photoshop or whatever you feel comfortable to do this. Uh, my printer tends to print a little dark and then when you put sealer on this it's going to darken it a little bit more as well. So I am going to lighten it up I don't like that at all. I lost contrast on that one. I just want brightness. Uh, let's see. That's too gray. Uh, I like the extra contrast there. Maybe here. That's oh, too gray. Yeah. This is plus 20 brightness, plus 40 contrast. Sure, we'll stick with that. Now, this doesn't look great on the screen, but I'm doing this because of the printing. Now, the other thing that I have is uh, an NPC. And um, this NPC is someone that uh, they ran into when they were in Elturel. So my party has been to Alterol before this, and his name is Gefael. He's the ferryman. So he was the one that got them across the river into, into uh, Alterol. And he's shown up as a refugee, like Rhea, in Baldur's Gate. I'm going to ignore this because it's going to annoy me. And it turns out that I normally wouldn't have made a card for a, a minor a bit player like this, but I found just the perfect picture for the guy, which is this. Um, so let's see. And it turns out that our uh, the the my players really were shocked when they ran into this guy in Baldur's Gate. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that I made them cry, but one of them was like choked up. She was definitely, there we go. She was definitely hit right in the feels by the, the old ferryman who said, I lost my family, I lost everyone I ever knew. I was on you know the opposite shore when El Terrell disappeared. 
and everybody was like horror struck. They're like, oh my God, the poor guy. So I'm gonna put him in here. Let's see, like this. And this may just fit, which would be hilarious. Uh, 4.92, yeah, that's gonna fit easily. Nice. So now I have two cards. Um, I only want to print this one page. I'm going to lighten this a little bit too. I'm going to make these same because I know that it's going to come out a little bit darker. Maybe make, I don't know if I want the same correction. So there's like the depth of color here that I don't want to lose. Yeah, the extra contrast isn't too bad though. Twenty and twenty. Okay. So I don't need a stat block for him. He's a commoner, so he doesn't doesn't get to do much. Um, and I don't I don't care what his hit points or other stats are. If people start attacking him, he's he's going to fall over dead anyway. So now I have these two cards. Now the way this works is I'm going to print this, and then we're going to put sealer on it. So be right back. Okay, welcome to my really messy shop. As you can see, I've used this board to spray on a few, uh, few different times. So I'm gonna take some of my clear gloss uh, Rust-Oleum sealer that I picked up at Walmart. We're gonna, we're gonna put a coating on the printed page, just kind of really gently here. Back and forth, give it one good coat. You don't wanna soak it. Um, you don't want the uh, thing to run, the colors to run, or be uh, too wet. Like this here, I got a little too wet. You don't want that effect, you know, on uh, printing because then the colors will run. So uh, we're going to give this one coat and let it dry. Okay, here I'm putting on our second coat. I had to edit it the uh, previous few seconds because it started to rain here. And you can see this is a little too wet, but this isn't so bad for a second coat. Um, so for a second coating, you know, you're less likely to make the colors run, but we're gonna do um, two coats and uh, I sometimes do a third if I don't feel that it's really that even or if I really want it well, well protected. And uh, the third coat, you can kind of soak it a little because you should have enough of this acrylic plastic soaked into the fibers of the paper, into the cardstock, that it shouldn't be uh, a problem with the colors running at this point. They should be well sealed in. Okay, we're back with our uh, page here and this has been coated uh, I think four times is what I ended up doing and then now I've got my uh, phone in a clamp so that we're not doing a Blair Witch remake um, and so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this and so to glue this what we need uh, are some pieces of dark colored construction paper the key piece is that you can hold this stuff up to the light and not see through it. And so that's gonna keep us from really, uh, I don't know if you can see my fingers through this uh, a little bit, you know, but that's gonna give us a nice card that isn't a little translucent where you can kind of see through uh, to the other side there. So um, that's, the, that's the idea. You don't want your players being able to read your stat block. So the first thing that we're gonna do um, I, the way I do this is I cut these guys in half. Um, so just a, a quick like reference fold. And here's the cutter that I had talked about before. Let me just take a second to just take a second to center this. And All right, 
So that gives us these half pages of dark colors. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use black for these. You can use whatever color the light doesn't shine through. Okay. The next thing you want to do is fold this on this inner line. So here, I usually do a little bit of a pinch. And you can kind of roll it back and forth in your fingertips to make sure that you're getting the right line. You can use a ruler and a table edge or whatever, you know, whatever folding method works for you to get a good sharp crease along that line. Alright. It's like right on the money. I'm pretty sure that's not going to come through on the camera, but there we go. Then what we're going to do is we're going to glue this guy to the inside. It's our Gorilla Spray Adhesive. Well, I really hope this is working out because I feel like I'm only going to get one take at it. Alright. Okay. Didn't clean my spout very well last time on this glue. So you want to give an even coating of glue, crease it down, okay, and then we'll do the other side. this. Alright. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find somewhere to press this together. Um, I use some, uh, some sloppy clamping techniques in my shop, but um, if you just put it under something heavy and flat, uh, it's going to work out. Okay, here we are at the last act, the last and final act. We've applied four coatings of sealer to these cards. And we have a nice shiny coating. We have them pressed nice and flat. You can see that here there's a little bit where we missed, where the edge is maybe coming up a little bit. This is okay. As long as the main card is pressed flat and sealed, let's say I have a little cat damage on this card, uh, be sure that you keep your pets out of your uh, uh, painting drying area. Let this be a lesson to you. Yeah, well, there's a little more cat damage. Awesome. That's cool. It's a good thing I only have one shot at this. Hmm. Well, anyway. So, today we're going to cut it. Um, if we folded it correctly, we should have a nice cut card along these borders. And uh, this is the cutter that I use with the little wheel. Um, you know, so this wheel cutter makes it where you're not dragging a razor across this and bunching up some of the cardstock as you cut it. Uh, which I've run into with some of the razor type cutters. And the way this works is you kind of slide this up to this edge. Um, I don't know that you can, how much of this you can see, but I have uh, this lined up. And we'll give it a couple of good firm presses. And there we go. We have a good cut along this line. And you can see we've lined up pretty well on the back here. There's a tiny bit of line uh, on the card. So you can, you can go back and remove some of that. But we have a black piece of paper here, so I don't really care about that, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, this wasn't a, a perfect card. Uh, but these are going to turn out pretty well. I'm still going to be very happy with them. Okay, typically what I do at this point is now that I know I have a good line, I'll start pushing lines through here. And I have my uh, cut marks. I know where the 
the blade rolls on here. And so I'll line up, I don't know, maybe the camera will pick this up. You can kind of see where the blade rolls through here. And so you try to line this line up right over the top of it. And that will be your guide. And I'm telling you how to cut paper here, which is silly. Y'all cut the paper any way you want. Just be sure to cut it close on the line. All right. So that's good cut. And do this. That's a good cut. Now we should be able to line up both ends of that. And that's a good cut. All right, one card for Real Surreal. I'm sorry, for Rhea Mantlemorn, um, where we have our stat block on the back and something we can show our players just kind of hold it up and say hey players this is what she looks like and you can still have your stats on the back all right i'm going to continue finishing this cut up just to go through with all of these and see how uh, see how the ferryman turned out Oh, I flipped it over, that's why. Yeah, ferryman card. Also looks pretty good. So I'm very happy. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't have a stat block on there. I do have a nice cat paw print though. It's very, uh, very nice of them to leave their uh, imprint on my work immortalized. Uh, yeah, whatever. That's what happens when you have cats. They screw up everything. So we have four cats. Two cards. Do with this information what you will. Uh, but I encourage you to use this for uh, maximum evil against you. I mean, do this to have fun with your players. Yes, that's what I meant. I didn't think this video was going to take a half an hour to make, so when I started the project and started recording things, um, my apologies that it took this long. But just in conclusion, uh, Dungeons & Dragons is a game of the imagination, and we like to have little tokens, little miniatures, I buy these guys from eBay or paint them at home, I have some friends that have 3D printers that make some pretty cool stuff. I've ordered things on Wish, I've gotten my little... Uh, flaming fist keychain and I've got a dragon eye ring so you know these are the kinds of props that help to spur the imagination and this is another one of those props I don't own the art in this prop <clears throat> I believe that Wizards of the Coast is fine if I use this as a prop for my game that this falls under the fair use policy of copyright law that I have paid for Descent into Avernus and that this art is part of that. So profiting from other people's art is uh, not cool. So just a, a quick reminder that you know if you're going out and you're searching on Google and you're finding things to pop into these cards, don't be a dick. Okay, don't don't print a box of them and go you know sell them somewhere because that is uh, that's kind of a dick move. So aside from that. I had a good time showing you how to make these cards. My players have a good time with these cards. I think they're super convenient. Um, I hope they add something to your game. And thanks for watching.